I can tell you about it, because I was there. I mean, there were literally thousands of us there because it was it was Pentecost and we'd come to Jerusalem to worship. But what, what I mean is, I was one of the ones who saw it all and heard it all. I mean, you couldn't come into Jerusalem that year and not hear about Jesus. He was on everyone's lips. The things he'd been doing, the things he'd been saying, and the way that he'd stood up to the corrupt leaders, it really was like he could be the one that we'd all been waiting for. You know, the, the one like King David, people had said, or the, the one like Moses, others had said. Maybe, maybe the son of man that we'd read about in Daniel. But then they'd betrayed him and they'd crucified and killed him. But it wasn't the end of the story. Whispers had spread, rumours and suggestions had been spreading like wildfire that the inner disciple group had seen Jesus again and so had others, 500 others, maybe more. And if we wanted to hear about it, it was easy because all the followers met every day together in the temple courts, the only place in the temple where everyone was welcome. And they talked about him to anyone who asked. When we asked them, what was next? They simply said they didn't know. God had said to them, wait in Jerusalem. So here they were. So that morning, I went to worship in the temple, me and thousands of others. And the believers of Jesus were all gathered there too. And suddenly there was this sound like, like a violent wind and it filled God's house where we were. And, and as we looked to where the sound seemed to be coming from, we could see these flames of fire that were coming down from heaven and they stayed on the heads of the believers and they burnt there like, like it must have been for Moses when he saw the burning bush or for Solomon when they dedicated the temple in the first place. People had been milling around at the stands and stalls doing their own thing, but now every eye was turned inward, fixed, facing this sound and light show. Whatever was happening, God wanted there to be no mistake. This was not to be missed. This was no human event. Then, telling everyone what God had been doing, the believers started to speak, but they weren't just speaking in their own languages of Aramaic and, and Hebrew and Greek. They were speaking in everybody's languages. I mean, there were people from everywhere who were there. So many languages, languages that we knew that they couldn't have been fluent in those. It was staggering. Finally, Peter stood up, because people are shouting all over, asking what this means. And everyone hushed. I mean, you could have heard a pin drop. And Peter started explaining to us, this was the start and the end of something both ancient and new, all at the same time. This is Joel's prophecy from hundreds of years before the final epoch of time when God is going to give his spirit to everyone. If you're a son or a daughter, you can speak God's words. If you were a young person, you could have visions from God and not just the rich or influential, even servants like me, regardless of gender, can hear God's voice. Just before this day, Joel had said there would be signs and miracles in the skies and on the earth. There'd been blood and there'd been fire. And on that cross, the sun had gone dark. But now, here was that day. And so everyone who calls on God's name can be saved. Believe me, believe me, I was there. We live in these final days, the time of Jesus' resurrection, the final epoch of time itself. And if we call on God, he will fill us with his spirit. This beautiful, powerful truth is here for the world to see and know. Every language, every tribe, every people, rich or poor, male or female. So have courage, have faith, believe me, and experience this reality of God for yourself. I was there. I was there.